Namaste World Razor, Sabine and Roger here. We are talking about Chandra once again. First we're gonna watch a little snippet on the naming of the landing point and then we're gonna watch Neil deGrasse Tyson speaking. Yeah, he's gonna talk about the significance of the moon's landing and where it landed on. So that's gonna be interesting. A lot of people told us we need to find out more about it. So here we are. So really looking forward to this, but before we dive into it, check out my new duds. <laughs> Significant perhaps to the naming point. If you guys don't know, maybe you can make the connection, but we have the moon chandra right there with shiva so i want to thank uh, our friends at damak dam for sending us glorious t-shirts head on over to damakdam.com and use the discount code raise the world 20 to get 20 percent off so if you're as excited uh, about the moon landing as we are remember to hit that like button of course subscribe if you haven't already and let's dive right into these wonderful videos Our Honourable Prime Minister has come to our control centre today to congratulate each one of us and we were excited to hear his wonderful speech and words of congratulation to us and he was actually emotional to know about this uh, historic awesome. event of India Aww. being the very first nation to have our Tiranga on board and uh, all of us very happy to know the naming of those two sites, the Chandrayaan 2 landing site which is now going to be called oh. Tiranga and Chandrayaan 3 landing site which is now going to be known as the Shiva Shakti Point. Shiva Shakti Point. Oh, yeah. India just became the fourth nation to successfully land the spacecraft on the moon, but hmm. India is the only country that has ever landed near the moon's south pole, and that's significant. Here to explain why this is so yeah. significant, we have astrophysicist and author Neil deGrasse Tyson here to break it down Hello. for us. Good morning to you, Good morning. Neil. Good morning. So let's yeah. put this in perspective here. Why is this landing so close to the moon's south pole so significant? Well, so you may know that the farther away from the equator you go, the lower the sun's arc is in the sky. Okay. Until you're near the poles, the sun just barely ambles above the horizon. Okay. If you, the same is true on the moon. If you go to the South Pole, mm -hmm. where there are craters that have rims, mm -hmm. the altitude of the sun over the horizon is not high enough to reach the bottom of the crater. Mm -hmm. So it's literally where the sun don't shine. Okay. <laughs> and so... <laughs> so, 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 so when the moon's hit shine. by asteroids and comets, comets have water. If water lands in those places, they're called cold traps, and the water never goes away. Well, that's the key there, the water. So you're near Sweet. water, and that's interesting. But what I found surprising is water is something that may actually be able to trans be transformed into fuel. Yeah, so you can drink water, yeah. but if you separate the hydrogen and the oxygen, H2O, and bring them back together, it is rocket fuel. Mm. And you know what the exhaust is? Water, <laughs> okay, yeah, so amazing. it's it's pretty clean rocket fuel, and that's wow. the main engine of the sh cool. space shuttle. Cool. That big orange tank yeah, that yeah. they used, that's hydrogen and oxygen being merged together to create the thrust to put that puppy into orbit. Wow. We understand you cool. actually met with the Indian Prime Minister er earlier this summer. What yeah. did you to hey, talk about cool. with regard to space exploration? That was his first comment. He says, here are our plans for space. We hey, want awesome. to uh, 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 involve private enterprise. Mm -hmm. We want to grow. I said, yeah, good. I said, try to make sure everybody's involved because then the whole country can participate because India is a, a, a diverse yes. uh, community yeah. of, mm -hmm. of, of ethnicities and religions. And I said, that way the whole country can, can share in mm -hmm. these visions and maybe mm -hmm. Uh, ambitions in space could be one of the greatest forces of peace. I was just about to say, and yeah. unify it. Yeah. A unifying force of peace. Absolutely. For unifying future. force of oh, peace. Yeah. Let's let that marinate Thank for a minute. You. Yes. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Happy Neil. that you came to see us. You Thank got you. It. You know, it's a very beautiful date, 23, August 23. Mm -hmm. Very auspicious. There it is. Yeah, it's just, it's just descending. This is the first time it's leaving the Chandrayaan 3. The Chandrayaan 3 is like the space module that lands on the moon and this is inside of it this is the thing that actually goes and explores oh that is very cute it is very very cute <laughs> this goes on the moon and it explores look it even has like um you can see the 
the marks yeah, and there's of something. the wheel. Oh, so the ISRO logo and national emblem. The national emblem, like the, the flag? Yeah, maybe. So there will be a Dharma wheel yeah. <laughs> all over the moon? Cool. Cool, it's like solar, solar panels. It looks so fragile. Traces of India, wherever it navigates the moon. Oh yeah, they're gonna show it. Good. Oh yeah, the national emblem. I think it's that oh. that four-headed lion. Oh, okay, okay. I hope they show it. Oh, look how it can go over rocks. Yeah. Aww. I was always fascinated by the moon. Oh, so the rear wheels are adorned with the logo. Cool. Ah, oh, look, all alone in space, discovering the moon. Holds symbolic importance. Cool. So one lunar day. So it's going to be exploring exploring for two weeks. <laughs> so it's up there now exploring. Yeah, right now. So cute. All by itself. possibility of water so it is not um, yet confirmed yeah some sources are saying it's confirmed already and some are maybe the exact location isn't but if there is water isn't there also life well it's frozen frozen, frozen water, water so I don't know how did also, it get there? And life needs more than just water to survive. <laughs> How did the water get there? Well, if it came, if the moon did come out, out of the earth, then water would have been on it. So that's like, mil like millions of years old water? Okay, so he was talking about... So basically it's the south pole of the moon. And basically in our Arctic regions, even on earth, you know, there's time when the sun goes below down the other side of the equator, just the way that the light shines across the surface of the earth. There's some places in the North and South Pole that never see daylight during those months, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, the South Pole of the moon is the same way, like especially deep in the craters. It's kind of like a mountain ridge, right? You know, we're, we're in, your, in the mountains. The sun, it seems like it's setting way earlier than it's supposed to be, but that's just because it's going behind the mountains, right? Mm -hmm. And then it gets dark earlier. Okay. So the moon in the South Pole is literally always dark. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. The sun never, ever, ever shines there. Wow. But anyways, it's significant because it's so dark there and the sun's not shining there, then it doesn't, the temperature's always going to be a lot colder, right? So there's going to be frozen water there. And I think they've already discovered that there is water there. Okay. And that's a really big deal because it means if there's ever going to be any lunar colonies in the future, like people, you know, setting up, you know, space habitats, you know, as like staging points for like further space exploration, they can do it from the moon now because there's water there. Okay. Right. So then they can convert. They can have facilities that actually convert the water to fuel. Okay. And it's also cool because that water can also be used to produce air. Right. So you got hydrogen and oxygen so they can use it to help. So instead of having a supply chain bringing the air to space, to the moon for these, mm. you know, sites, mm, okay. they have water there, which right. is a really big deal. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then that's why. So India being the first to land there, yeah, is a really big significant deal. Also because it's way, way, way harder to land there because of its location. Do you know that the speed was about 6,000 miles per hour when that thing was coming to land? 
which what? is crazy fast. Yeah, so then of course it was, so they had to go around and go around and slow down and slow oh. down and then make the landing, right? Oh. And also what Sabina doesn't cool. know is I believe it was just a few couple weeks prior that Russia, they were in a, they were actually in a space race, India and oh. Russia. <laughs> Yeah, to be the them. to be the first to land on the South Pole, and okay. and they Russia actually beat them to it, but they crashed. Oh no! Yeah. Oh dear. So they crashed like yeah a couple of weeks ago or whatever. But without people in it. No, it was the same sort of thing, like a lunar okay. rover well, type meant thing. Meant to be. I believe. Meant to be. All eyes on India. And then India made it. Yes. Oh, karma, so, Russia. So a historic <laughs> event, but of course I love Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about. Yeah, the cultural opportunity is a unifying force because, yeah, it is very diverse in India and we're learning that just mm -hmm. having our channel and in the comments section. So sometimes things can get a out of hand at times. But, yeah, so then a unifier to bring people together and focus on this unity. And I think it, we've seen that because all of India was celebrating this. It was amazing. I actually went to my dentist and he is... Yeah, one of our friends from the Hindu Association. So he's Indian. And I, right before, uh, right when I met him, I congratulated him on, on the moon oh, landing. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> he was pretty excited about it. Oh, yeah, so that's it was awesome. Cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everybody's rejoicing in it. So there's water on the moon. I thought the moon is just a, a dumb rock. That That is a quote by, I forgot who, was it Elm Watts or Sadhguru? I think it was Sadhguru. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Sounds like him. <laughs> but anyways, it's significant because, yeah, of course we're not really much into the science and the physics and everything, but I believe that the moon actually is a part of the Earth, right? What? I'm not sure how it happened. I think maybe when a comet crashed into the Earth, you know, millennia ago, a piece of the Earth due to the impact shot up into space and that what? became the moon but who knows it could all be theories and it depends well, on which yeah, theory the moon you got, heard got sent there because... well there's the there's the hindu stories and also we're getting a lot of comments on our last video saying that a lot of it is you know just metaphor used in that time ah, by the rishis and sages okay, to okay. explain things okay. and we're understanding that quite a bit more as we're diving into Sanat and Dharma. It's just so vast and there's so many deities that a lot of them are representations of these higher forces and powers, right? So then they are giving them names and personalities and on and on and on, but very representative of a truth, right? There's a higher truth there to all of it. So we got to be open to that as well. How well, can it always be dark, though? Like, when you see the moon crescent, it goes all the way down. Huh? And when... <laughs> now it comes the fun part. For this is going to be fun. This is going to be really good. How can it always be dark if, if the, we have a full moon? And it comes <laughs> right up. That's just for members, I think. <laughs> so anyway, so the sun is only going to be shining, you know, based on, like, it's traversing the sky, right? Or I don't know how the moon works, if the moon is like moving like this and if it's rotating. I don't know any about that, any of that. But I'm just thinking about the very bottom of it, right? So what he's basically saying is that the sun doesn't come low enough or the moon doesn't tilt enough that it would shine there ever. Even if it's spinning. Even if it's spinning. Even if it's spinning. Yeah, because you're also thinking about craters. There's these really, really deep craters on the moon due to all the asteroids hitting it. You know, okay. and then these craters are like big mountains. Picture like the Kathmandu Valley. It's totally encircled by mountains, right? So and then so the sun is never coming to an angle that would shine light into these craters. Oh, because of the the craters protected, kind of. Yeah, because of the craters mm -hmm. and also the angle, right? Okay. Well, it's just I don't I don't even think that I'm qualified to be explaining this. So anyway, <laughs> so you guys, yeah, let us know in the comment section because it's just the fact that I don't know if the moon is spinning and I don't know if it's wobbling like the earth because the earth, we know that the earth is going like this as it rotates. What? Yeah, that's what creates the seasons, right? So the sun and then the equator, right? So then you have your equator line and then the sun is rotating like this and then it becomes hotter up here and then it's winter down in Australia 
And then the earth tilts like this, so then it's summer in Australia and it's winter up in Canada. Yeah. Fascinating. But who, who, who our passion lies in spirituality, <laughs> not yeah. in. This is a very unusual video not in to physics cover here. And science. But, anyways, a lot of fun. Hope you guys had fun with us. Om Chandrayan 3, Shiva Shakti Point. Om. Namaha. Namaha. <laughs> Maybe blessed friends. See you next hmm. video. Peace. Thank you.